Okay, Mike, let's review what we did here today. Okay. So the first thing that we did is we chose a gun type based on our application, right? That's right, based on what application uh, we were selling into. So some of the different applications, automotive, general metal, wood, waterborne, highwear, uh, adhesive. Okay, so we can choose a, a gun type based on that. Our atomizing technologies that we can choose from, well, we have air spray. That's kind of the old uh, technology has been around forever. Yep. Okay. And uh, we can move up to HVLP, which is going to be an improvement in our transfer efficiency. Yep. But our flow rates are going to be lower. That's right. Okay. And then thirdly, there's a compliant gun, which uh, has the same fluid delivery as the air spray gun, but the transfer efficiency of the HVLP. That's which, right. Which is uh, kind of the best of both worlds. That was the gun that we used in our video today. That's right. Okay, so we've chosen our gun type and our atomizing technology. We're going to need to choose a tip size. That's right. And the way to do that is to check our viscosity. Do our viscosity test. Uh, we used a Zon cup. We went back to our chart, yep. found out what the viscosity measurement was, and then went back and selected the tip that uh, equaled that, that viscosity measurement. Okay, that's great. So now we've got a tip, we've got a gun chosen, and so basically we're ready to start setting up. We're ready. Okay. So we talked about our safety requirements, wearing a respirator, wearing safety glasses, wearing gloves, and following all the proper grounding procedure, right? Right. So we had to ground all the buckets. Yep. We had to ground the spray unit itself. Exactly. Okay. So well, the first part of our setup is we're going to flush out the system just to get out anything that was there from, from previous. Yeah, maybe previous applications, or if it's a brand new unit, uh, the test median uh, from, from when we test it in the factory. Okay. So we, we'll flush it with solvent, uh, a compatible solvent that's uh, compatible with our paint. Right? That's right. Okay. So once we've done that, then we're, we're able to load the, the paint the material that we're going to be spraying. That's right. Okay. So once we get it completely primed, we're going to set our fluid pressure, and we're going to be doing that through the length of our fluid stream. That's right. All right, once we get the fluid stream length that uh, is required for whatever our technology would be, uh, in our case, compliant was uh, what? Eight to 10 inches. Eight to 10 inches, mm -hmm. okay. Then we could set our atomizing error, right? right. And right. we were starting with a 20 PSI. That's right, we started at 20 PSI because we were using the compliant gun. Okay, great, okay. And then we set our pattern size and shape. Right. Based on the size of our part that we're spraying. That's right. Okay, and then what we did is we increased our air pressure at five psi increments to improve our atomization, our particle size. That's right. Okay, and when we saw no more improvement from the previous uh, pressure setting, we would back off five psi. Backed it off five psi. That gave us the the best particle size at the lowest possible air pressure. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So then we're ready to spray. Yep. So we reviewed spray techniques. Uh, some of the techniques that we reviewed were keeping the gun parallel to the part, yep. so they have a nice, even distribution of paint, that we don't have a heavy buildup or a thin spot. Right. Detrigger off the part, yep. again, so that you don't have a heavy or thin spot, so you have complete coverage. Right. All right. We talked about corners, doing outside corners. We want to keep the gun parallel to the corner. Yep. All right. On an inside corner, is a little different. You don't want to be parallel to the corner, but parallel to the surface. That's right. Okay, so that again, you want to make sure that you keep a nice, even distribution. Nice, even distribution of the part. Right. Talked about other things like banding and uh, using a 50% overlap when you're uh, spraying, again, for consistent coverage. Consistent coverage. coverage. Yep. Right. Good. Okay, after we're done spraying, we do a flush. Mm -hmm. Okay. First thing you need to do is turn off your atomizing air. That's right. Not needed for doing a flush. That's right. Okay, and we're going to load it with solvent. Yep. And you talked about that we have a um, a bypass tube, so you can flush out the pump first, then the hose, or in the in the way we did in the video, we just pump from the pump right through the hose. All the way right out to the gun. Yep. And when you did that, you introduced some air for scrubbing. Yep, just by simply picking up the pickup tube out of the uh, solvent and introducing a little bit of air to give it a little bit of chop or scrubbing action. That's great. Okay, and lastly, we just want to reiterate the safety rules that you need to read your manual and your MSDS, material safety data sheet that you got from the paint manufacturer. You need to follow all safety requirements. That's right. Okay, thanks a lot, Mike. All right, Eric, thanks. And that's it for today's video.